Hello students, I am Manoj Kundare, the Assistant Professor of Electronic Science. Welcome back to our e-learning platform. In previous video, we have seen the different types of sensors and transducers. The link of the previous video is available in the description box. Please check it. Now, in this video, we are going to see the concept of the actuator. We know that an actuator is a device that moves or controls some mechanism. Actuator turns control signal into the mechanical action such as electrical motor. Alternatively, an actuator is something that converts energy into motion. That means the device which converts the electrical energy into the mechanical motion or force is known as actuator now in this video we are going to see the actuator named as the dc motor then what is the dc motor let's see the explanation about the dc motor as the name implies this motor works on the dc supply and we know that dc means the direct current supply okay the dc motor is the motor which converts direct current into mechanical work in a dc motor the input electrical energy is direct current which is transformed into the mechanical rotation that means in other words we can say that the dc motor is a type of actuator in which it works on only the DC that means direct current supply okay now let's see the working principle of the DC motor the DC motor works on the principle of Lorentz law let's see once again the DC motor works on the principle of the Lorentz law which states that the current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic and electrical field experience a force and that force is known as the Lorentz force that means the Lorentz law states that if the conductor which is carrying current is placed in magnetic and electric field then a force is generated this force is known as the Lorentz force the direction of this force is given by Fleming's left hand rule and its magnitude is given by the formula F is equal to B I L where B is the magnetic flux density, I is the current and L is the length of the conductor within the magnetic field. That means the Lorentz law states that if any conductor placed in the magnetic field and electric field then it experiences some forces this force is known as the lorentz force and each its magnitude is given by the formula f is equal to b i l where b is the magnetic flux density i is the current and l is the length of the conductor within the magnetic field now let's see what is the fleming's left hand rule the fleming's left hand rule states that if we stretch the first finger second finger and the thumb of the left hand to be perpendicular each other that means if we stretch the first finger second finger and thumb which are mutually perpendicular with each other then the first finger represents the direction of magnetic field this finger represents the direction of magnetic field the second finger represents the direction of current this finger represents the direction of current and the thumb represents the direction of force this thumb represents the direction of force experienced by current carrying conductor i hope you all understand the Fleming's left hand rule. Let's see once again. If the first finger, the second finger, 
and the thumb of the left hand are stretched to perpendicular each other then this first finger represents magnetic field second finger represents the direction of the current in this case the thumb represents the direction of the force here is this conductor is placed in this magnetic field that means in this direction the current in this direction hence the direction of force is upward here okay i hope you all understand the fleming's left hand rule now let's see the next point the construction of dc motor all dc machines mainly consist of two parts one is stator and other is rotor as the name implies stator is the stationary part of the motor and rotor is the rotating part of the motor the stator is stationary part that includes yoke pole pole windings and interpoles the stator produces the magnetic flux the rotor of the dc machine consists of commutator brushes compensating winding and shaft it rotates in external magnetic flux produced by the stator when the current flows in it now let's see the detailed description about the construction of dc motor the first part is yoke the outer frame of the dc machine is called as yoke that means this outer frame this is called as yoke here we can see that this part is the yoke okay it is made up of cast iron or steel it is not only provides the mechanical strength to the whole assembly but also carries the magnetic flux produced by the field winding okay that means in dc motor this outer part is called as yoke and it is generally made up of cast iron or steel it provides the mechanical strength to the assembly the next part is poles and pole shoes the poles are joined to the yoke with the help of bolts or winding that means these are the poles of the dc motor okay here in this diagram also we can see here this part is the poles of the dc motor they carry field winding and pole shoes are fastened to them these are the poles and this is the pole shoes which is connected with the poles pole shoes serve two purposes first one is they support field coils and spread out the flux in air gap uniformly the next part is field winding these windings are called as field winding which is connected to the yoke and the poles that means these are the field winding they are usually made up of copper field co coils are formed wound and placed on each pole and are connected in series that means this each winding is connected with each other in series combination they are wound in such a way that when energized they form alternate north and south poles the next part is the armature core this is the armature core this is the armature core the armature core is the rotor of dc machine it is cylindrical in shape with slot to carry armature winding it consists the winding these windings are called as the armature winding okay the armature is built up of 
thin laminated circulator steel disc for reducing eddy current losses. It may be provided with air ducts for axial air flow for cooling purposes. Armature is keyed to the shaft. This armature is keyed to the shaft. Okay. The next part is the armature winding. These windings are known as the armature winding. It is usually formed wound copper coil which rests in the armature slots. The armature conductors are insulated from each other and also from the armature core. Armature winding can be wound by one of the two methods lap winding or wave winding method. The next part and the important part is commutator and the brush. This part is known as commutator or this part is known as the commutator. The physical connection to the armature winding is made through a commutator brush arrangement. The function of the commutator in a DC generator is to collect the current generated in the armature conductors. Whereas in case of DC motor, the commutator helps in providing current to the armature conductors. A commutator consists of a set of copper segments which are insulated from each other. These are the copper segments which are insulated from each other. The number of segments is equal to the number of armature coils. Each segment is connected to an armature coil and the commutator is keyed to the shaft. The brushes are usually made up of from carbon or graphite. Here these are the brushes generally made up of carbon or the graphite. These are the brush arrangement here. They rest on the commutator segments and slide on the segment when the commutator rotates keeping the physical contact to collect or supply the current. This is the function of the brush. Now let's see the working of the DC motor. The animation helps in understanding the working principle of the DC motor. When the armature windings are connected to the DC supply, an electrical current sets up in the winding. That means this armature winding is connected with the DC supply, then the current is set up in the winding. Magnetic field may be provided by field winding or electromagnetism by using permanent magnet. That means the current provided by this DC source and the magnetic field is provided by this north and south pole arrangement. In this case, current carrying armature conductors experience a force due to the magnetic field. That means we have seen the Fleming's left hand rule if a current carrying conductor placed in this electric field and the magnetic field then the force is produced in this direction. I hope you all understand this mechanism here. The force is generated here in this direction and here in downward direction. Due to this force this rotor keeps rotating in cyclical path. The commutator is made segmented to achieve the unidirectional torque. Otherwise, the direction of force would have reversed every time when the direction of the movement of the conductor reverses in the magnetic field. This is the simple working principle of the DC motor. Let's see once again. The DC source is connected with this coil which sets electrical current in the circuit. The permanent magnet provides the magnetic field. Hence, the rotor experiences a force 
in this direction that means in upward direction and here in downward direction hence the rotor keeps rotating okay this is the working principle of the dc motor let's see the different types of dc motor generally there are mainly two types separately excited and self excited the self excited further divided into three types series bound dc motor shunt bound dc motor and compound bound dc motor the compound bound dc motor further divided into two types long shunt and short shunt that means in separately excited dc motor there is a separate excitation mechanism is used in self excited depending upon the connection series bound means here it is connected in series in shunt bound it is connected in parallel and in compound bound it uses series and parallel connection okay i hope you all understand the types of the dc motors now we can also divide the dc motor on the basis of brushed dc motor and brushless dc motor this is the brushless dc motor and this is the brushed dc motor in which we can see here that in brushed dc motor the commutator arrangement is given while in brushless dc motor there is no commutator arrangement okay now let's see the difference between the brushed dc motor and brushless dc motor a brushless dc motor also known as the synchronous dc motor unlike brushed dc motor do not have the commutator the commutator in a brushless dc motor is replaced by electronic servo mechanism that can detect and adjust the angle of rotor a brushed dc motor features a commutator that reverses the current every half cycle and creates single direction torque while brushed dc motor remains popular many have been phased out for more efficient brushless models in recent years now let's see the applications of dc motor first let's see the applications of the shunt dc motor its characteristics is that approximately constant speed adjustable speed medium starting torque up to 1.5 fl torque the application is for driving constant speed line shifting latches centrifugal pumps machine tools blows and blowers and fans reciprocating pumps these are the applications of shunt dc motor now let's see the series dc motor it is of variable speed adjustable varying speed and high starting torque the application of series dc motor is that for traction work that is electric locomotives rapid transit system trolleys cars etc trains and boys and conveyors now let's see the applications of cumulative compound dc motor they are used in for intermittent high torque loads for shears and punches for elevators for conveyors for heavy planers for rolling mills ice machines printing presses air compressors etc these are the applications of dc motor i hope you all understand the basic concept of the dc motor its construction its working principle and the types and applications of the dc motor thank you